Hey guys, Kelly again with Droid Life. So the other day we saw these two phones, the AT&T One X versus the Unlocked One X, you know, quad core versus dual core, um, compared on video, and uh, it showed boot times and played some really awful music in the background and showed an N22 benchmark. So we're gonna do something similar to that actually, but now that we like actually have control of the environment, we just wanna do it, see which one's faster, compare some things, see how it really rolls. So we've got both turned off, we've got uh, fast boot turned off, so we should get full boot ups when we do this, and we'll just see which one's faster. So quad core on the left, dual core on the right. So at t phones always turn on really weird, but. We'll just give these a press and a let go. We'll see what happens. So the Tagger 3 started up a bit faster. I pressed those at the exact same time. So the AT&T version has an extra boot sequence because it's AT&T, which could slow up the uh, boot time, we're not really sure. Um, so far though, take a three, a little bit ahead, but Snapdragon could come from behind and catch up, you never know. Um, I don't know if this would, you know, alter the results at all. Actually, it looks that at t one just jumped ahead. The take a three has been stuck at this screen. I also have, you know, tons of media and stuff stored on this one. Um, look at that, so they both were I would say almost identical. One looked like it was at the ring screen faster than the other one. And actually once we unlocked and loading sense, you can see I'm still in airplane mode. Um, we're already done over here on the uh, dual core side. And there we go, the uh, quad core one just finished. So I actually ran this and the video screwed up the first time and I got the exact same results. So that's actually twice I've done it and the dual core Snapdragon came out ahead in just, a, you know, at least a boot test anyway. So sort of interesting, right? You can tell it's popped up initially faster, the dual core caught up. Anyways, who knows if that's actually a legit test or not, but we just thought we would share, you know, boot time on a phone is actually sort of important. All right, so let's do some uh, benchmarks. All right, so the first benchmark we're actually gonna do is an old standard that we've used time and time again. It's actually Quadrant. And we're not using it because we necessarily care about what the results are at the end, although we do a little bit. But what I really wanna show you is when it gets to the graphical stuff, um, frame rates. So 12 core GPU in the Tegra 3 processor, Adreno 225 GPU in the Snapdragon. So the Adreno 225 is not old per se, but it's sort of an overclocked Adreno 200, which is what we saw in the Snapdragon S3, and I believe processors even before that from Qualcomm. So not until we get to the quad core Snapdragon S4s are we gonna see the new Adreno, I believe it's a 300 or 350 or something like that, and it should be a beast. And not to say this one's slow, but it's just a little bit older than say the 12 core GPU that's in the Tegra 3. So with Quadrant, we can sort of show you um, some frame rates and how it's performing during heavy graphical usage, basically. So let's go ahead and run both at the same time. And we'll try to get you zoomed in a little bit so you can see the actual frame rate numbers once we get there. Um, so running through these first set of tests, you can see the Tegra 3 jumped out in front a little bit. And I've run this test a couple times and it usually does actually finish ahead of the, the Snapdragon every single time. All right, so here we got some frame rates. So in the 50s, in the 50s, 59 over here, 58, 60, 59, 58, down to 47 on the Snapdragon. Steady 57, 59s on the Tegra, 46 again down here, the Snapdragon, up to 68. So it's jumping around on the Snapdragon, holding steady 50s or 60 on the Tegra. So with the Globe test, Snapdragon actually up to 60, down to 54. The quad core held at, you know, 57. So DNA test, down in the 30s over here for the Snapdragon, it held in the 50s, almost 60 for the Tegra 3. So you can see the, the difference really is that DNA test, and that's usually where it kills most processors. So down in the 30s, and always in the high 50s for the uh, Tegra 3. So you can tell it's, it's definitely been optimized, I would say, a little bit more for that graphical stuff. And again, 12 core GPU, it should give you a better gaming experience. All right, so here is the final test though. So remember, the Tegra 3 actually finished ahead of the Snapdragon 1X, but it actually lost in the overall score. So here's the Tegra 3. We can get that to focus. So 5,007 was the total score. Here's the Snapdragon at 5,034. So, you know, pretty, pretty darn close, but the Snapdragon actually overall came out in front. Again, like I said, 
The Tango 3 actually finished faster. It held frame rates and stuff like that better throughout the whole test, but somehow the Snapdragon comes out ahead. So Quadrant, who knows you know, what all the dirty details are of Quadrant. That's just one benchmark, but we wanna show you sort of the difference there. Um, so after that, we really have one more benchmark to show you, and it's the Antutu. Okay, so the final test, yeah, is Antutu, and we ran this, or we didn't run this, but it was in that video from the other day, and it showed the Tiger 3 crushing the, uh, the, the Snapdragon 1X. So let's go ahead and run that one. Um, let's go ahead and start test at the same time, see which one, you know, finishes faster and what the score is at the end. Other than that, there's, there's a whole bunch of other benchmarks we can run, right? We run CF Bench, Smart Bench, GL Benchmark, and we'll run all those and post all those results to the site. You definitely don't need to sit through 20 minutes of benchmark videos in order to get that, though. So we'll run this one. Last one we'll show on video. The other ones we'll just post up for you. And uh, let's see what happens here. So I don't have any, like, German ns, ns music like was in the other day. Damn, was that awful. All right, so, so far... Same same pace, both at 21% done, now at 28% done. And the other day, the Tegra device jumped way out in front of the uh, Snapdragon. Um, this could have this could have a factor on some tests. You know, my Tegra device has like, a ton of apps loaded. You know, it's got a ton of pictures loaded. Um, the, uh, the HTC One X from AT&T is completely clean. Just got it today, so you know, there's not there's nothing on there that would be bogging it down per se. But that could just be me making excuses up too. So, so far these are our neck and neck. So definitely not seeing that uh, the results we saw from the other day. These seem to be a lot different. I really need some German music. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, in the video the other day, these were completely different. All right, here we go. So frame rates, you can see the uh, Snapdragon S4 is actually slightly higher than the Tegra. What's odd is that the colors being produced look completely different. These are supposed to be the exact same screens. Um, maybe the, I have the brightness tuned different, but maybe the benchmarks just creating different colors. There they look the same, but did you guys notice how the colors were completely different? Very, very odd. It's supposed to be the same Super LCD 2 display, so that could be a benchmark thing. Um, and looking at this now, this the Snapdragon actually looks like it's a little bit ahead in this benchmark test. Um, as far as frame rates, again, we're at 56 on the Tiger 3, 59 on the Snapdragon. Now we're testing card rates, write speeds. So I have Wi-Fi on on the Tegra, and I'm just on AT&T's. HSPA on the uh, on the Snapdragon device, so shouldn't affect the test all that much. And there we go. The Snapdragon actually finished the test faster, which did not happen in that video we saw the other day. But once you get to the score, the score for the Tiger is eleven thousand, and the score for the Snapdragon is sixty nine hundred. So it's a huge difference, right? So interesting results. Like I said, we'll have more. Um, Comparison since really we've already reviewed the device now We just want to see what's different about it with the snapdragon in there. So anyways, keep checking us out full review coming droid life. Peace